Okay, this is upstairs. This is the upstairs hall bathroom, the bathtub, hot on the left, coats on the rack, mode's fine, everything supposed to go down. Goes down. Hi Timmy. Now some of these lavatory basins do not have overflow drains. Those are called perlators. They're not required. Just know that if you got a child or you know somebody that's absent-minded in your family and they leave the sink running, you know, for the Barbie doll or you know washing Barbie's swimming suit or something, just know. You know underneath these sinks, underneath these lavatories and sinks, it's it's all pretty boring. The fans, some of them do not vent directly to the exterior. Upstairs we got a wet bar. This GFCI reset button is kind of broken. Right there, can you see that? See a little broken button. Hots on the left, colds on the right. Again, boring. So we're moving on along. This is the Jack and Jill. No perlator, you know. Hots on the left, colds on the right. Boring. Bathtub's fine. This is one of the sliding windows. It's got a torn screen. We've got a couple of torn screens. Of course, the bed. Well, I'm here. Might as well just see. No. I tested it someplace else. I got, I'm got. still looking for the um, reset button for the bathrooms because I, I tested those and they worked and boring. All right. That's going to be kind of interesting to find out. Overlookers. This is, I did find that one torn screen. This is kind of an interior. This is Southwest bedroom. And I showed you the one torn screen. I might as well show you another one. That's torn right down there. And there's the shingles, by the way, that are all coming off that first row. This is the primary bedroom, primary bedroom, bathroom. Now the jet tub is kind of interesting. We don't have any access to it. All right. The water came out that filthy. You know, running it didn't help, but the water came out that filthy. But I can turn everything off. Off. I want to this for upstairs. Got a little story about that. Turn everything off. And by the way, for the jet tub, this is the GFCI for the jet tub, and it's supposed to be faceless. You're not supposed to be able to plug an iron into it or anything. And it comes on. There's no way to turn it off except using the GFCI. We don't have any pump access that I can get to. We don't have an operable switch for it. The GFCI is open and the water is filthy. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to drain that. And that's the only way you can turn it off. And that's the wrong way. Something's wrong with the switch. Something's happened here. Again, hot's on the left, cold's on the right. Boring. We've got two crack tiles in here, three crack tiles in here. We've got three crack tiles over here. And we've got inside the shower, we've got one crack tile. We do, right there. And when you do this, okay, That rings hollow. That's not as good of a demonstration as it is down here. That's bongos, man. Come over here. It's tile six. So 
So these tiles are going to shift. They're going to break. They weren't set right. This electric receptacle outlet is GFCI protected, so it should have a label on it. But it is controlled, believe it or not, by the small garage GFCI, which controls the large garage. So this receptacle outlet, this receptacle outlet, excuse me, is on the garage circuit. They're not supposed to, you know, once upon a time that was okay, but not lately. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. Boring. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. What it sounds like. This door swings both ways. It's okay for it to swing inside. It has to be able to swing outside. Okay, that's the requirement that it swings outside. pretty good. Everything goes down, it's supposed to go down. Kind of hangs on, hangs on the floor there a little bit. Coming in, there's not a way to secure coming from this side. Okay, you can lock the primary bedroom front door. I mean, door to the patio, you can lock that door, you can lock that door. But on the back side, coming through the closet and the laundry, you can't lock that. Clothes dryer length is supposed to be labeled. Clothes dryer is dirty. Well, how about that? Can I lock my flashlight? The vent is dirty. It's supposed to be labeled. It's got the wrong kind of cap. Four prong electric clothes dryer uh, is not GFCI protected. I went ahead and opened this up because I was looking for the main water disconnect. And it wasn't there. Of course, that would have been a bad location for it. But it wasn't there either. So, I might... <laughs> I might have to come back and get this. Somebody needs it in there for something. This is 120 for the dishwasher, for the clothes washer. Uh, that's not GFCI protected either. It is protected over here. We do not have a stopper. And then again, like, hot on the left, coats on the right. Once again, boring. Is it? Yeah, it is. This is GFCI protected, but not that. Hang on along. This is downstairs guest bathroom. This commode is too close to the wall. You're supposed to have 15 inches from the center of the commode to the no perlator. Boring. Boring is good. Boring is good. Moving on along. We're in the kitchen. Okay. Sub-Zero refrigerators are beyond the scope of this inspection. I do know that it's making ice. But this is an expensive piece of equipment. It's a complicated piece of equipment. It's like an air conditioning system. And just like your air conditioning system should be serviced, so should this. It has cabin filters so the air doesn't get musty. It's got filters for the water lines. It's got uh, coils for the refrigeration that need to be cleaned. It just needs to be gone through by a professional so that you make sure that the thing works like it's supposed to. Moving on along. I can't tell if this has an anti tip device or not. It's so heavy I can't tip it over to test it. Alright. The bake works, the boil works. We do have convection on both sides of the ovens. And that's beyond the scope of this inspection. That's how you get that open. And you got some of the scratches right in here. All your burners work kitchen vent fan when you get a big vent fan like this it really sucks without a makeup air without makeup air in the kitchen you're going to draw air out of your fireplaces so if your fireplace is being used and you turn the kitchen vent fan on it's going to suck air backwards out of the chimney past the fire carbon monoxide into the house 
We should have some way to equalize the pressure when we use any one of these fireplaces. Vent fan works, vent fan light works. Now, the see the black tape on the wall back there? It's like in a square. That looks like a fire blocking plate, but that's not a fire blocking plate. That's a faux plate. A faux plate. You're supposed to have a real fire blocking plate. And on the kitchen, the sink, this is called a foul line, F O U L. Um, I hate discounting my work, kind of like bundling. Uh, that you're going to hear about in the electrical section. Wait a minute, I'm going to break from my sponsors. Good home inspection. Wow, well, they just don't want to talk. So this is a foul line, F-O-U-L. That's where all the cooties hide and the germs and the bacterium and the viruses. And I've yet to have a client call me back and say, hey, bud, I'm glad you're supposed to cascade down like this. I've yet to have a client call me back and say, hey, bud, I'm glad you caught that foul line. We got that. Good job. I'm not dissuading my client from seeking perfection, but that might be, I don't know if that's the hill that everybody wants to die on. I'm not seeing any stoppers. I don't know what size this food waste disposal is. I'm going to look it up when I get home. If it's one horsepower, then this switch shouldn't be here. Code says this switch shouldn't be here, but the manufacturer says that as long as it's less than one horsepower, then it's okay to have the switch underneath here. But you know what the manufacturer also says? It says you should not have a rocker switch. It should be an on-off, like for real switch. We've got pattern fittings up underneath here that we can actually see. I kind of like that, to be honest with you. So that's kind of neat. Um, the dishwasher, that drain line goes up and catches, goes up and catches the sink so it's high enough. Now these sticks, just put a stick in it, Philip. Let's go to the beer store. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. The manufacturer thinks that you should have holes drilled into this and brackets holding your sink up. But all you got holding your sink up is a little bit of pookie up in here. Put some pookie in it, Philip. We don't want it leaking. Okay. Doug, man, you're the best. I know. I'm gonna get my raise next week. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Then we got drywall screws. Drywall screws and sticks holding the darn thing up. Can you believe that? The floor is in, you know, a little worse for wear underneath here. It's kitchen sink floor, so that doesn't surprise us, but it is. The dishwasher, it doesn't really fit square in this cabinet. I wasn't able to read the data plate on it. But I was able to see this. Look how boogered up it is around there. Well, I paid extra for that. All right, it's a little boogered up. Um, make a liar out of me. The rack was coming out on its own. There we go. Come on. So it's a self-unloading rack. It's just a little not square in here. Just a little not square. So, <clears throat> oh, that kind of leads us to. How do we do this? We get some of that cold water. Our food waste disposal is locked up. How about that? How about that? Got people messaging me now. My 8101, one audio file. I don't know who you are. Who's 801? <clears throat> so, this is the microwave oven. We're supposed to heat something up. So, I heat that up. It's supposed to heat up like a container. And I got this thing called Magic Lights. This thing called magic lights. I won that because I was the smartest kid in the room one night. So we just put this over here. We just add 30 seconds. And that's it. That's the light show. It's supposed to blink on and off. Oh, oh the um, 
turntable wasn't set in there really well. Probably the cleaners didn't put it back. Hey, you don't need to read any more of the report. You don't need to see any more videos. Everything else is anticlimactic. Two, one. So this is how I know it works because that's hot. Hot, 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 hot. And those are my magic lights. What else can we do here? Okay, this fireplace hearth does not extend 24 inches. Here's the key up here. It does not extend 24 inches. This is a tile floor. You know, but for safety reasons, you should know that this is a little close to your fire. Um, somebody, you know, who's not with it, not totally thinking for themselves, or have, hasn't developed those skills. Child, for example, they, they may go right up to the edge of this. They may go right up to the edge of this, and you need to be standing out about here, you know. You're not supposed to be that close to a fireplace. This earth extension is fine. They both have screens. Now, what neither one of these guys have, these fireplaces, is they do not have these little brackets that fit inside there. The dampers can close 100%, and gas logs do not make smoke. So if you could close this damper 100%, and then uh, it would eat up all the air in the house, and you know, off-gas all the carbon monoxide, and put everybody to sleep. So you're supposed to have those little damper blocks inside of there. So just so you know. And then this fireplace, unlike this fireplace, Manufacturer specification supersedes, but this fireplace gets its combustible air from the other side of the wall. This fireplace gets its combustible air from the living space. And that would be another good reason, another good reason for makeup air in the kitchen.